good morning, everybody. No matter who you are or where you might find yourself on life's journey, whether you're a believer, a doubter, or a seeker, you are welcome in this sacred space. And uh, we have a lot of announcements uh, that you should be reading through. Uh, but of course, today is our annual plant sale. So after worship, uh, you're encouraged to go back and I see all sorts of, of plants and baked goods and I'm going to let you talk about it. I, I just wanted to let you or, or remind you that we have not priced things. Everything is free will and so there are baskets on the table. You know, just toss in what you think is uh, fair for whatever you purchase, but we have a lot of stuff, so be sure and go. Thank you. And let's see, what else did I highlight? Next Sunday is our recognition of our graduates, so um, I'm looking forward to being able to uh, give them a blessing as they jump off into the next phase of their uh, journey in life. The, uh, let's see here, celebration of Sunday. For the last two years, I'm usually on vacation when this comes around. But I'm happy to say that I'm going to be here for the first time on June the 19th as we uh, celebrate kind of the year as it has now starting to end. And the Strength in the Church special offering is also on May the 19th. And uh, let's see, what else do we have going on here? Ah, uh, yes, the reaching out uh, for May is for Connection Point, and it is the uh, shoe drive. So should you have lightly used shoes, or if you feel compelled to go out and buy some new shoes, uh, you're encouraged to do either of those, and the basket is back in the narthex. And we are also quickly approaching the month of June, which is nationally uh, Pride Month. And we will be having a booth again this year from Friday, June 7th and Saturday, June 8th. And we are looking for volunteers. Uh, we uh, really need three people per shift. And uh, we have sign up sheets back in Fellowship Hall. And if you have any questions, I'd encourage you to ask Gertrude. Gertrude, would you raise your hand just in case somebody doesn't know who Gertrude might be. Okay, so uh, are there other announcements that we need to be uh, listing? Uh, normally I don't do this, but I, I'm just compelled because uh, the roof is still standing. We are, uh, the reason why it's standing is, and I'm wondering about that, is because actually Paul's here today. And <laughs> but he's, he's here and he is uh, accompanied by his lovely daughter Megan and son-in-law Kevin and so we want to greet them uh, they're on a, a major road trip from the Pacific Northwest over to Maryland and uh, Maryland yeah so welcome and uh, let us before we begin our worship then uh, greet one another in the peace of Christ I uh, invite you to go back into your spots where you first were seated and join with me as we begin our time of worship with our call to worship. Christ gives us a new commandment. Love one another as I have loved you. 
When we love one another as Christ has loved us, we will live lives full of joy. We will live with God's love deep in our hearts. Let us worship the one who shows us how to love. Let us worship with joy. Hallelujah. And our opening hymn is uh, found on page 388. Help us accept each other. Actually, it is tune 386, and we're singing 388. <laughs> seated and I invite the children to come up for their lesson and as they're showing up to the front I want to also recognize those who are on with us on Facebook live and again I remind you that if you have a prayer request please uh, type it in now so that we can have it by the time we have prayers of the people yep it's on okay so today in Sunday school, we learned about a couple guys. Do you guys remember what their names are? Paul and Silas. Yep. 
Paul and Silas, and they traveled all over telling people about God. Sometimes people were happy to hear them, but in this story, they ended up in jail. All right. So one day when Paul and Silas preached, the people grumbled. jail. Paul and Silas weren't afraid. They were happy. They knew God was with them. When Paul and Silas prayed, an earthquake <laughs> the doors of the jail swung open. Into the room, the jailer wondering what had just happened. So Paul preached again, and the jailer was Paul told the jailer about Jesus. The jailer believed. Then Paul and Silas's stomachs... They were hungry. The jailer fed Paul and Silas breakfast and let them go free. Okay. Let's say a quick prayer. Dear God, thank you for being with us, even in times of trouble. And all God's children say...
Thank you, choir. <clears throat> I'd invite you to join with me again in a unison prayer of transformation and new life. Please pray with me. Jesus, our sibling and friend, we confess that we do not always love one another. Our divisions and disagreements so often prevent us from knowing the joy of meaningful relationships. Even as we seek to follow your example, we forget that we are chosen and appointed by you to bring hope to the weary world. Help us renew our focus and live by your will, that we may follow you with joy in our hearts. Amen. Jesus no longer calls you servant, but friends. Each relationship is a new opportunity to abide in Christ's love and a reminder that we can start again. We are forgiven. Thanks be to God. Good morning. Our scripture today comes from the Gospel of John, chapter 15, verse 5 and 9 through 17. And this is from the Passion Translation. I am the sprouting vine, and you're my branches. As you live in union with me as your source, fruitfulness will stream from within you. But when you live separated from me, you are powerless. I love each of you with the same love that the Father loves me. You must continually let my love nourish your hearts. If you keep my commands, you will live in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commands. For I continually live nourished and empowered by his love. My purpose for telling you these things is so that the joy that I experience will fill your hearts with overflowing gladness. So this is my command. Love each other deeply as much as I have loved you. For the greatest love of all is a love that sacrifices all. And this great love is demonstrated when a person sacrifices his life for his friends. You show that you are my intimate friends when you obey all that I command you. I have never called you servants because a master doesn't confide in his servants and servants don't always understand what the master is doing. But I call you my most intimate and cherished friends for I reveal to you everything that I've heard from my Father. You didn't choose me, but I've chosen and commissioned you to go into the world to bear fruit. And your fruit will last, whatever, because whatever you ask of my Father for my sake, he will give it to you. So this is my parting command. Love one another deeply. This is the scripture for today. May we hear the word of God in it for us. I'd invite those who are able to stand to do so as we sing our next hymn, which is Where Charity and Love Prevail, found on 396. <laughs>
Thank you. you. May be seated. As we ponder this morning's scripture, we must understand that this is just a smaller part of Jesus' farewell discourse with his disciples, which actually begins on chapter John 13 and ends at the end of chapter 17, just before Jesus then leads the disciples out to the Garden of Gethsemane. Within these chapters, the writer of the gospel shares with us the events and discussion that Jesus has with his disciples at their last Passover meal together. During this meal, Jesus demonstrates the depth of his love toward the disciples through this intimate act of washing their feet, even the feet of the one who betrays him. Jesus is described as very troubled and is preparing those that he loves of his pending death. It is at this meal that Peter says that he's willing to die for Jesus, only to be told that by morning he would have denied knowing Jesus three times. Thomas points out during this discourse that they don't understand the things that Jesus is sharing and asks the question that we all often ask in our daily lives. How can we know the way? Jesus responds by saying, I am the way, the truth, and the life. It is also during this meal that Jesus gives his disciples a new commandment, to love one another. And before leading them out to the Garden of Gethsemane, Jesus prays for his followers and closes in his prayer saying, I have revealed to them who you are. And I will continue to make you even more real to them so that they may experience the same endless love that you have for me for your love will now live in them, even as I live in them. To love one another. That's all Jesus asks of those that he calls friends. On the surface, it sounds very easy, a very fuzzy, cozy kind of a, a request or a type of commandment. Uh, in fact, while I was thinking about and reading that scripture, the song that the Beatles made of their hit song, All You Need Is Love, kind of came to my mind. And so I looked up to see what all of the lyrics were. In that song of 79 lines, 62 of those repeat the phrase, All You Need Is Love, which also included the phrase, Love, Love, Love. Yet how easy is it to truly love? How is it? And what defines the meaning of love? When I think about what to love means, it entails a depth that goes far beyond the idea of emotional attachment. It requires a good deal of sacrifice, of denying at times one's own personal comfort or needs. Love entails all aspects of what a relationship with another is required to be maintained. I think of verse 3 from the hymn, Abide With Me, as I think about this commandment. I need your presence every passing hour, I need your grace to foil the tempter's power. Give me your love, my guide, and stay to be through cloud and sunshine. Oh, abide with me. 
Every person who has ever stood in front of a pastor to be married repeats these words in some form to their future partner as they vow a commitment to abide with them. Abiding is the essence in a relationship. As Jesus is addressing his disciples, he is shifting from that role of rabbi into a role as friend, as equal. When Jesus knelt and washed the feet of those present at the dinner, he showed a servant's heart and explained to them that they must treat each other in the same humility. And during the meal, he makes sure that they understand friend to friend what is going to happen to him. He tells them that he has shared with them all about God in the way that he has received God. He assures his friends that they have seen God by seeing him. That through Jesus' actions, they also know God's heart for them. This is found in Jesus' words when he says, I love each of you with that same love that God loves me. Jesus gives us not just words, but also actions of what love is. It is demonstrated through the respect that Jesus gives towards those who he encounters, those who are blind, crippled, who were outcasts because of diseases like leprosy, of those of differing cultures like the Syrophoenician woman or the Roman commander whose servant was ill. In his action of washing feet of his disciples, he shows the humility of caring. Even in the Garden of Gethsemane, Jesus demonstrates his love by protecting his disciples from the guards who came to arrest them. While dying on the cross, Jesus takes care of his mother's future, of her needs by placing her in the care of the beloved John. In verse 5 of today's scripture, Jesus says there is a requirement that is needed to be able to live in this type of love. Just as a branch must be connected to the vine in order to flourish, so must we continue to be in union with Jesus. This union is the commandment to love one another as he has loved us. And this is the same love that Jesus has with God. We reveal through our actions what vine we are connected to. Jesus' response to social justice was to confront those in positions who had the influence and ability to change those injustices. How do we continue in today's world to live out the love that Jesus demonstrated? Well, this past Thursday, there were around 1,200 people from 24 differing faith communities assembled to address three concerns that they see as correctable injustices here in the city of Lincoln and in the county of Lancaster. We were at least 50 strong as a part of that 1,200 people. At this assembly, we heard personal testimony from a person whose family found themselves in crises through mental health issues. There was a story by a young woman who had found herself involved in the criminal court system. And sadly, a report of how the rise in eviction cases last year involved 1,309 children here in Lincoln. Through these voices, 
I heard God's call to love one another. Jesus says that his, uh, to his disciples, love each other deeply. When you take the opportunity to hear stories of how people find themselves standing alone in uncertain situations that they are facing, our hearts are opened in new ways. Individually, we can feel powerless in our desires to help tackle systemic problems in our community. But in the uniting of 24 denominations, uh, our faith communities, we can work together and are finding how to work together in making our concerns heard. As 24 differing faith communities, we have band together to practice that commitment of love to people who find themselves in situations just like Jesus found while he was walking here on earth. Love isn't just a word. It's an action. It is action that helps build, not diminish. Love is action through creative energy, creative visions, creative relationships that Jesus commands of all of us who call themselves disciples of him. Thomas, during that conversation that evening, says, How do we know the way? Love is the way. Love each other deeply as much as I have loved you, were words that Jesus spoke to his disciples. We as current disciples are branches of the vine of Jesus. The vine of Jesus is sustained by the love of God. And we are to love one another as the way to sustain each other. It's not easy. Sometimes we find ourselves in uncomfortable tension with one another. But if we are to be true to Jesus, then we must, must, must love each other deeply in the same way that Jesus has taught us to love. And that, my beloved, is to abide with one another. Even if we don't know who the other is at this point. As the Apostle Paul states to the church in Corinth, so these three things continue forever. Faith, hope, and love. And the greatest of these is love. Amen. I'd ask Ashley Romero to come up now to help join me as we focus now on coming to the table of love. God is with you. And God is with us all. Open wide your hearts. We open them completely to the Spirit of God. And may God's love nurture your wandering spirit each day. And may God's light sustain your souls each night. Community of believers. As the beloved of God, we are invited to come and to gather at a table of love and liberation, a feast on the dreams of God, to be nourished by a taste of what God desires to be among us.
And God whispers, come and live abundantly, turning from all that claims blessings, from money, power, or control. To answer the call of Christ is to find ourselves, no matter our social location, choosing to align ourselves with the causes of the marginalized, the oppressed, the outcast, and the isolated, and with the faith that together we might enflesh new possibilities of healing, of connection, of freedom from all that destroys. And when these are the desires of our hearts, we open ourselves to God. Blessed are those, Jesus said, who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. And so let us come to the table expectant, eager, open to tasting the rich blessings of heaven, born from unexpected, unexpected places and people and experiences. As we take time thinking about all of the implications of this invitation to feast with God, let us hold in prayer those that we know who are ill. Let us pray for Rick Williams as we say, hear our prayer, O Lord. Christy Turner, hear our prayer, O Lord. Let us hold Maddie Elbrick in prayer. Hear our prayer, O Lord. Galen um, Withers, let us hold in prayer. Hear our prayer, O Lord. Uh, we also want to hold uh, the daughter of Kay Mint, Dina, uh, in prayer, and also a friend of Dina's Cara, Cara, whose father has just uh, been placed in uh, palliative care. Let us hold these people in our prayer. Hear our prayer, O Lord. Loving God, I think about all of the heartache that's going on through the world today. Those who are caught in the horrors of war who have been affected by severe weather of our neighbors to the north who have had homes destroyed uh, because of spring tornadoes. We ask that you continue to help them sense you walking side by side with them. What other joys or concerns are we bringing forth today? Oh, yes, thank you. Um, Dolores uh, Wentz uh, is currently in the hospital. Evidently, she had a, an emergency operation towards the end of the week. Let us hold Dolores in prayer. Hear our prayer, O oh Lord. I would like prayers for our friend Paul, who was just recently diagnosed with bladder cancer, and also to hold in prayer all those people in the Houston area that are dealing with the flooding. So let us hold Paul in prayer who's dealing with bladder cancer and also uh, those in the Houston area who are uh, having to contend with the massive floods. Let us pray. Hear, Hear our, our prayer, prayer, O Lord. <clears throat> Joys or other concerns. So I just have to ask this question, how have we experienced the presence of God this week? Anyone? Kevin. Yes, uh, let us give thanks for a new grandson, which uh, would make Paul a great grandfather, is that right? Yeah, okay, let us pray. Thanks be to God. Yeah. 
I was just so grateful for being invited to come to the um, justice meeting on <coughs> Thursday night. And I ran into people I haven't seen in years, and that was such a good feeling that people across Lancaster County and Lincoln really do care and want to do something. Right, so we're seeing God in action as we gather together. And also, I have to say on Friday morning when 150 of us assembled also on the steps of the county uh, building, uh, trying to continue to deliver our message, uh, I saw God in action there. Anything else? Okay. I would ask the deacons to come forward at this point. In this meal, we remember the life, death, and resurrection of the one who still takes on flesh among us today. And on the night that Jesus would be arrested, he gathered with his friends and companions. And in the midst of the tension and dangerous time, they found each other at table. Connecting over the story of God enfleshed among them. And as they did so, Jesus took bread and he gave thanks to it. He broke it and he shared it with his disciples. Uh, for those who are visiting, what we will do is pass out the bread first and then together we will eat it and then we will pass out the wine uh, secondly and in unison drink that also.
And as he held this bread, he said to his friends, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. And do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he also took the cup, gave thanks to God, and shared it with them. As Jesus held the cup of wine, he said this to those who would drink of it. Drink from this, all of you. This is a cup of new covenant. As often as you drink of this cup, drink it in remembrance of me. And so we pray, come Holy Spirit, breathe breath of God, renew, renewer of life, bless all who gather at this table, that we might be transformed in our remembrance of your radical love, your eternal embrace, and your grace that makes all things new. For the sake of our shared lives and for the lives of those yet to come, nourish us and renew our hope in Christ continues 
to rise anew among us. And let us pray the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Jesus has appointed us to bear fruit that will last, fruit that will bring love and justice, joy and hope. Bring what you can. Together, the gifts we offer can transform lives. Let us sing our blessing of our offering, which is found on page 776. Closing uh, hymn today is Let There Be Peace on Earth.
friends of God, as you leave this place, remember that God has chosen you to share the love you found with a world in need. Go bear fruit that will last. Let your joyful hearts be signs of hope in this anxious times. Amen.